what's up you guys welcome back to my channel or i should probably welcome myself back to my own channel but i am ro let's talk a little bit so first things first we're just gonna address the fact that i have been gone for i think five months now and this video pretty much addresses the reason why i was just overall in like a weird space in may nothing was really going on but i was just kind of weird my moods were just kind of up and down my my ideas weren't really coming to me and even if they were i just wasn't executing them in the way that i knew that i could so i just kind of like okay bro let's just get yourself back together get your creative juices back flowing you know what you're capable of and the content that you have planned or have put out isn't necessarily a reflection of what you really want to put out or how you want to put it out so overall this is kind of like a backstory of why i took a break was the break supposed to be this long absolutely not but considering where my life went or has gone as you can see by the title i didn't think it was time to just hop back on youtube in the middle of that if anything that made me realize okay my break from youtube is going to be a little longer than i even expected so let's just get into the title as you guys see i made the decision to leave my job and before i get into it i do want to say a disclaimer if you are also in a position where you feel like it's time to transition from your job whether it's to go to another company or just to do a career change or to just venture into entrepreneurship i don't want to say that this is or isn't a sign for you to make a step forward in your decision of what you want to do with your job and as we continue in the video you will see that this took a lot of thinking a lot of praying a lot of financial stability before I came to this decision so this is not me encouraging anyone to leave their job or to quit their job abruptly because it wasn't an abrupt decision for me so yeah just kind of want to say that before we get into the video but let's just get into it why did I leave my job kind of in the middle of a pandemic not in the middle middle because we ain't in the thick of it like we was last year but overall just at a risky point and if you're new here i think it's best that i kind of just like rewind i did graduate from alabama a m university with a degree in civil engineering and i decided to go the project management route in construction For the past year and i guess technically eight months I've been a multifamily project engineer where I basically manage the building process of apartments. So that's kind of like a backstory. But now just kind of let's hop into what led me to my decision. What was I saying? Girl, I am rusty. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, around May, I just started feeling real stagnant and I thrive off of productivity me feeling unproductive or feeling like i'm just in one place too long puts me in a funk now this is in hindsight at the time i thought maybe you know i was going through quick little mood swing point but when i say i couldn't shake the feeling for months i could not shake it so that was kind of like the first inkling of me needing a change also along with that odd just heavy stagnant unsure feeling i also felt my job becoming personal and what i mean about that is i'm a very professional person i always view business business anything on the job i just see it as me doing my job it doesn't personally affect like my emotions who i am but at some point around that period of time my job just started to feel extremely personal to me i'm naturally on that nonchalant rim so for me to feel something i know that i'm feeling it for a reason and just some things that were happening particularly on my project that were kind of just like some ain't right about this even things that have been occurring 
that had occurred before or that were normal in my field of work just stood out more in this time. It's like my senses were heightened to what was going on. Also something that kind of led to my decision, which is not really internal, like the last two, this is more of an external thing, but still a sign nonetheless. People started leaving. <laughs> People started leaving or being let go. And that was a sign for me, not because I felt like I was gonna be let go. It was more so like, these people are feeling the same thing that I'm feeling. These people kinda saw it and felt it too and were doing something about it. Whereas me, it's just kinda like, I'm kinda going with the motions. I really convinced myself for a long time that that was just how things were supposed to be. It started to get stronger and it just started to be on my mind a lot. Me wanting to go to work, me wanting to be there was very, very low. So along with just my internal feelings, just people leaving a the job, there was also this one thing in particular that I'm not gonna really dive into, but I will hit on because it's really like the defining moment of me knowing that me leaving is going to happen, if that makes sense. Around the June point, necessary communication had ceased. And I mean completely ceased, and I wasn't sure why. You know that saying, two communications is a two-way street. It was just like, I was on a one-way. <laughs> I was on a one-way to nowhere. And that felt even more personal, and me being technically entry level is only so much that I can do or at least that's how I feel so that particular thing was the thing that solidified that yeah not that it was time to go but at least put in my mind that it's happening at first I was kind of just trying to accept the fact that this is how the job is this is how it's supposed to go but that moment made me realize like bro no it's not supposed to go like this it was just a matter of me knowing when. I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all. I would have left then. I would have left in June. But one thing that I have really been trying to work on is me being emotionally impulsive. And what that basically is, is making rash decisions based off of temporary emotions. So I tend to do that, especially if I'm heavily involved in something and this is my job, so I'm heavily involved in it. So one thing that was important for me was to not make this an emotional decision, even though it is, but just not an impulsive one. The when was the question. And how I came to the decision of when it was gonna be time, prayer. I leaned heavily on prayer and God and his guidance. I wanted to make sure that I left in a way that I could look back and be happy with the way that I left. I just pretty much prayed on it, journaled about it. And I got, when I tell y'all, I got the clearest of direction from God on how to deal with this. I mean, to the T. And I feel like God had given me the go ahead, like, go ahead it's okay and then my own anxiety came into play like girl like what you gonna do this is technically my first ever job i've had a, a couple of internships but i've never worked for anyone before i had never left a job before it's kind of like anything that i've been a part of i kind of graduated from like school you graduate or internship, the internship just end because it's the end of the summer, but I've never just ended anything career-wise or academic-wise on my own. So it was anxiety around that and then the fact that this is my career. It wasn't like this is just a little side job. This is <laughs> my career, so I had to make a sound decision. Back to the timeline, in June, in that mid-June period when I knew that I was going to be leaving, it's just like, okay, bro, it's time to prepare yourself for leaving. And there were some things that I did to prepare myself. One of them was financially preparing. My last video, I believe, was actually about what I spent during my birthday month. But my next video that never happened, I don't even think I got around to recording it, but it was going to be me talking about me putting myself on a budget and have setting a savings goal for the summer. This summer was gonna be my stack summer up until August. I didn't do anything this summer. 
at the time I was personally preparing to just save up a lot of money just so I could have it for traveling. That was what I was saving for. Little did I know I was saving up to leave my job, even though I already had savings accounts and stuff. Number two, as I stated, preparing spiritually, just having that confirmation from God, praying for um, strength, praying for a push in my character, praying that God continue to prepare me for whatever is to come because I had no clue. And then there's more so of the career-based things, updating my resume, updating some other professional things, and then it was, it's time to apply for jobs. So I updated my resume and then I started applying for jobs. So yeah those three things prepare myself financially spiritually and then just professionally prepare myself for whatever the next step was going to be with my job search this was the defining thing there's this place that i've always wanted to live i wouldn't say always but since middle school uh, it started off for a very superficial reason why i wanted to live in this place but it never went away and i've talked about it since i've always said it so i told myself if i'm gonna leave leave big whatever my next step is it has to be big i can't leave this job just to go to another job in the same city that i'm in because number one the city that i'm in i never wanted to live it's like the only reason i'm here was because of the job and me knowing that it's kind of like, it was like, bro, it's time for you to go where you want to go. It's time. So I started putting applications for the city that I wanted to live in. Nervous. So I only applied for positions in that city. To my amazement, there were a lot of open positions. When I tell y'all I was applying to jobs every single day every single day i mean i probably have applied to a hundred jobs in the last two months now there was one point in my job search where i was just kind of like i felt like i was limiting myself like oh i should probably have a plan b a plan c or let me just at least get myself into the state so they'll be like my foot in the door but then i had to stop myself it's like am i gonna have big faith or little faith which one is going to be is go big or go home because I knew the problem the thing itself wasn't just the company or where I was it was just like it was time for me to become and be who I wanted to be and go where I wanted to go for so long mid-July I felt myself getting closer and closer to that win when was it time and I ended up going out of town and when I came back that Monday from the trip, I was just like, it's time. So that was August 9th. I knew that that day was the day. I couldn't bear anymore. I couldn't front anymore. I couldn't do none of that. I typed the letter up. When I tell y'all, it was just an emotional experience. And I think it was definitely emotional because I knew that, I knew that this last step here was also the first step for what was to come. So I submitted it and I was like, whoo, left. And I submitted it at the end of the day so I could just leave out. I didn't want nobody to come see me that day. So I put in my two weeks notice on August 9th and then my final day came, which was August 20th. Yeah, I have been an unemployed girl ever since. <laughs> I'm just like, well, technically, yeah, I have. But it's just funny to say that. But, um... August 20th was my last day and the day that I'm recording this is September 16th. So I'm just like four days shy of this being a month. And the day that you guys see this video probably won't be until, I don't know, probably late October. And another thing I forgot to mention, I had had like a few phone interviews or I had proceeded in a few applications and I had also been very much so rejected from a lot of them as well. <laughs> so let's not, we're not going to ignore that point. God confirmed my decision even further because early that following Monday, I got a call. I was barely out of bed. I could barely hear the person on the phone, even though I was kind of sure of who it was because I had interviewed with them in the afternoon of my last day, August 20th, received the call letting me know that I would be extended 
an offer letter in my desired city. That was like the cherry on top of the confirmations that I needed. And I was able to negotiate my start date, which gave me room to not have to start immediately, have a couple months to prepare myself mentally, physically, because I'm gonna to have to move. I'm gonna be moving. By the time you guys see this, I will have already moved. And also allow myself to continue interviewing i didn't want a first offer to be my only offer if that makes sense today is september 16th i won't be moving until late well mid to late october so there's still so much that's going to happen in the span of this month and some change so i'm excited to see what's left of this period of me being unemployed. <laughs> you guys will definitely see in my moving vlog because of course I'm going to have to vlog this, right? I'm pretty sure me moving will be a series, so it'll be multiple vlogs. So you guys will at least get two to three parts of me moving because this is gonna be my first time moving cross country. So yeah, that's pretty much my story of how, when, and why I love my job. On the outside looking in, it's a risky decision. Typically you leave a job because you have another one lined up. Me, mm-mm. But I knew with my backing from God that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, I knew I was gonna be taken care of. So it wasn't a risk for me, it was more so just taking a step out on faith, basically. So yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned for the moving vlogs. I'm definitely more active on my social media, in particular Instagram, than I have been on YouTube, so. Just because I take a break from YouTube doesn't mean I take a break from social media overall. Definitely still very, very much so active on my Instagram. If I ever go in my A again, definitely go and follow me on my Instagram, according to Ro. If you're going through this same situation, contemplating whether or not you should leave or stay or whatever the case may be, the best thing that I can say to do is to pray about it. Honestly, there's never going to be a time where you just felt it feels completely like the right time or the right thing to do. You just kind of have to lean and walk on faith. I just want to encourage you to keep praying and keep being attentive to what's going on around you and always show up for you because nobody people will see you suffering or see you in a bad position and won't save you. You got to save yourself. So do what's best for you. Pray about it make firm, educated, spiritually backed decisions. One thing that I can say that I learned professionally is to not suffer in silence. I realized the reason for my suffering was because I wasn't really vocalizing that I was suffering. So just do my part in making sure um, I'm complaining if need be or and expressing my grievances if need be. If you made it to the end of the video, put a briefcase in the comments to let me know that you have stuck it out and made it to the end of me ranting about leaving my job. So until next time, stay blessed, stay beautiful, stay safe, stay cautious, stay aware, and I will see you guys in Houston. <laughs> Mwah. Next time on According to Row. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure I documented the most stressful day. It's like, it's the most stressful day, but it's the most planned that this move has been this entire time. Y'all, it's done. I don't know if y'all can hear the echo. It's done. Everything is out of here. I just finished eating. I told that food up, y'all. I, child, you would've thought I ate in days.